Hey guys, what's up? It's me, Thomas. Tonight we're back here with Josh Scorcher. Tonight's video is called The Top 10 Mindfuck Bosses. So yeah, these guys kind of mess with your sense of reality. And I guess the video game sense is, I guess, sometimes real life sense. You'll see what I mean in a minute. So I know he's sent to the F word, but eh, you know what's up. So be sure to like, subscribe for more. Hope you enjoy. Let's see how trippy this gets. I have nothing else, really. You are about to enter another dimension. A dimension not only of sight and sound, but of mind. Your next stop, the Mind Screw. His name is Joshua Burner, age 28, occupation, internet reviewer. The video, Top 10 Mindfuck yeah. Bosses. You're the guy. Mm -hmm. Ah, the Mindfuck. Yeah. That moment in the game where everything just kind of goes out of whack and the only reaction you could possibly give is... I'm only okay. three and a half years old. <laughs> now, there are a few pieces of criteria for oh. these entries. For one, they have to involve trippy imagery. Mm -hmm. For two, they have to involve some breaking of the fourth wall and or meta commentary. For three, they have to be weird even by the context of the game. All of the entries here fulfill at least one of these criteria. The more and better they fulfill, the higher they place. Without further oh, ado, hold fun. on to your gray matter, we're diving in. Yeah, also find a way to make sure you know what's real. <laughs> anyway, number 10. Wow, it's been a while since I talked about Dynasty Warriors. Let's I'm fix that. Oh boy. What do you think Dynasty Warriors? So, what do you think? Mine F. Campiness, killing thousands <laughs> with a single guy, epic cinematics to rock music? Well, how about an illusionist taunting you by bringing up Wait, phantoms of past did? enemies and current friends? No? Well, you haven't played Dynasty Warriors 7. Well, I guess huh. a lot of people haven't, but let's not talk about that. During the Awkward. Wu storyline, Sun Tzu decides to go for a walk to clear his head after lamenting on how he saw one of his compatriots die in front of him by falling off a castle roof after he thought Sun Tzu was going to kill him. While going for a walk, Fog starts to appear around him, and a mysterious illusionist named Yuji hey, appears, and things get a bit weird. Yuji teleports around the phantoms. area, leading you into different traps consisting of phantoms of Sunsa's old enemies, the retainer that died, and even his own father who died a few stages before. The phantoms taunt Sunsa by criticizing his mission and past actions, making him seem like the villains he is after. By the end of the stage, Yuji himself appears by multiplying into several phantoms himself and attacks you. All the while, it's foggy and weirdly rock music is playing. Yeah, way to bring down the mood. While Futures Warrior <laughs> games like Hyrule Warriors and Fire Emblem Warriors play on this trope, it was a departure from normal Dynasty Warriors tone and mood. <laughs> it starts and ends with a very mysterious and dark tone, very unlike the series. While there are still guitarists in the middle section, which is <laughs> Warriors, Sorry. for a bit, it was out there. It's also weird that this guy is never explained. He shows up oh, in an optional that? stage later in the game, but has no connection to the core Wu story any longer. Unfortunately, this battle does end tragically as Yuji's goal was to distract Sunsa long enough to have archers kill him. It is lower due to not being that trippy compared to other entries, but for just being so out there in terms of Dynasty Warriors standards, I think it still deserves a spot. Fair enough. Jeez. No matter what, he probably did Welcome his mission. Welcome to Psychedelia, man. Where the road to Holy the light is an inner peace. is paved with groovy rainbow bubbles and whacked out zombies that multiply like bunnies, man. Like zoinks, man. You end one more sentence with man, I get to remove one bone of my choosing from your body. Yeah, I can't keep that. I'm up. good, I'm good. After getting tricked, Juliet Starling finds herself in, supposedly, the mind of one of the dark purveyors. Mariska. And yes, she's basically an it's undead like hippie zombie. stereotype. From her clothes <laughs> to her spaced out preachy dialogue to her having a freaking sitar. And, of course, plenty of psychedelic imagery. Fighting mm -hmm. Mariska really isn't that hard. Just avoid her attack, shoot her until her health bar goes down, slice her up in three phases. 
But the environment is so dang distracting. The trippy color scheme and imagery are blinding. She'll start attacking you with tractors and chicken heads in phase two. And after you chop her up at the end of each phase, she multiplies like a paramecium. And even purposely splits herself and have to bring out more zombie hippie duplicates. Uh, who developed this game again? Oh, Suda51. Okay. Makes sense. Honestly, the only reason Mariska's lower is mainly because the other entries are a lot more freaky. And like I said, fighting her isn't too difficult once you got it figured out. Still, now we gotta know what happens when you fight a zombie fresh out of Woodstock. You get a colorful Pretty smackdown much. with a literal well, yeah. mindful experience. <laughs> I'm not sure she liked that experience, but eh, to each run. Number eight. Ever heard of a game called oh, no, no Straight Roads? Straight road. It's a music-based hack and slash where you play as a rock band duo trying to take on an EDM music label that has a monopoly over the industry and the city. The game itself has Pretty some much. normal trippy imagery, but that comes oh, to a head when you fight Eve. Eve, being oh, an Eve. artist and sculptor, oh, yeah. has a very Zeke's Escher design to her too. fight. It begins as she launches hands and projectiles at you while she teleports by diving into a bunch of paintings. As you damage her, she will change the scenery and even the perception of the arena. After a little bit, she will separate your two playable characters, and mm. as you switch between them, you would need to survive attacks that get trippier and trippier as the battle continues. She adds lasers, more giant hands, a complete change in design and depth, and you feel like you're fighting the Illuminati with that stupid pyramid in the background. More on no that kidding. later. The fight will eventually end as you break enough mirrors Sorry, in the back Eve, to done. make Eve fall back into a void. Here, the battle is less trippy, where you just need to chase her, but the entire white void is a little alarming. And the camera puzzle that you get right before the conclusion where you control both characters at the same time is super trippy, but still challenging and fun. Since the boss fight is more trippy than mind screwy, it is lower, but considering all the trippy imagery and sounds they encompass the fight, it isn't surprising to see it here at all. Now, it is a recent game, so definitely mm -hmm. not a game you should glance over if you're interested. Definitely not a game I can glance over since a certain scorpion won't SHUT UP ABOUT IT! AK Green Scorpion? Really gotta get to that game, you know? Not sure when, but... Actually, you should probably go over my schedule. I need to double check and see what I'm doing. <laughs> anyway, moving along. <laughs> yeah, I gotta get some, like... Stuff I really been meaning to Let's get to. Let's be charitable and say yeah. DMC no, isn't cry. exactly a world-renowned game, but it's home to yeah. quite the jarring boss fight. And for this list, that's exactly what we're looking for. Bob Barbus isn't terribly Barbus? subtle about what he is, at least in a meta context. Oh, mm -hmm. running a news organization named after a predator. I'm sure no one could guess what they're referencing. Still, other than that and Bob clearly being a spoof of a news anchor on the network they're spoofing, I like to think that the idea was that all news organizations are at some level corrupt. Or maybe I'm giving DMC too much credit. American news is a big pile of crap! Anyway, the boss fight starts properly when Dante grappling hooks his way into an illusion of the Raptor, Raptor News, news network. network logo. When the screen clears, Dante is standing on what is honestly a pretty boring black circular arena. Fortunately, the representation of Bob Barbus quickly appears to steal the show. He's basically a modern reinterpretation of the MCP from Tron. Little bits of his human face That's floating around, God's trying work. to cover up his demonic visage. I love it. Now, this alone doesn't quite get him on the list. Sure, his face is pretty trippy and the random images are interesting, but the first face of the fight after some banter between Dante and Bob is pretty vanilla. Sam. Hit the glowing red weak points to open up Bob's face for an attack and repeat until the first health bar is gone. Then we get into mm -hmm. the real meat and potatoes of the fight. A grappling hook prompt appears over Bob's eye and Dante swings into yeah, his face. In He's then transported into an arena where he fights off Wait, hordes of demons while Bob commentates over it, pretending like Dante is slaughtering innocent civilians. At age eight, he attacked and killed the head nurse at St. Lamia Orphanage. I saw one girl, like, beg for her life, but, like, he said he was gonna kill her anyway. And then he did. The camera work for these segments is really what sells it. Instead of the over-the-shoulder view you've been working with for most of the game, you have to control Dante while dealing person. with a static camera that's supposed to be filming Dante from a helicopter. The whole thing gives a very They Live vibe, particularly the scene where the main character puts on the glasses and sees the oh, world yeah. for what it truly is. That's why this fight gets on the list. If I had to make one suggestion, make their in a little more lively. You know, shouts from the home audience booing Dante or cheering as the SWAT raid happened would have really brought the whole thing together. Mm -hmm. Final fun fact, 
Barbus is actually one of the 72 demons of the Ars Goetia and described as the great president of hell who speaks truthfully of secrets and hidden things. He's also supposed to be a lion, another predatory animal. Who knows? Symbolism win? Pretty much, I think. Anyway, number six. I remember the that. Bravely series has an oh. interesting relationship with the fourth wall. Throughout the two games, we are slowly okay. given more and more hints that the so-called celestial realm is like second actually shot now, our own world. We switch After one. a slew of events where the fourth wall is, well, mutilated, you finally meet Oof. the game's true villain, Providence. Huh. Yeah, okay. that is just the unholy offspring of Azrael, god of hyperdeath, and Falco. Anyway, Providence Accurate. wants to take over the Celestial Realm, i.e. Feathery Asgore, or Azrael. such an insane setup, however, the battle is pretty straightforward. The only thing you have to worry so. about is this BS instant death attack, unless you choose Passive with Auto Life, of course. Then, as you try to leave... Not so fast! I've got some children I need to make into corpses! Yeah. Hi, Cypher. <laughs> yeah. We had an agreement that that one come back. Right off mm -hmm. the bat, the main gimmick of the fight Jeez. is that Providence Dark. doesn't exactly play by your rules. See, mm -hmm. if you take too long with your turns, he'll actually interrupt you. This puts a lot of tension on you as you have a very limited time to actually put in your commands. I have to pretty much play by instinct. Then once you get him to low health, he forces your party members to attack each other and then tries to delete but your save data. No, my save game stop. I'm on the final boss fight in Oblivion. I can't start again from the beginning. Fortunately for the player, all the protagonists and most of the antagonists come to cheer you on so you can deliver the final blow. Wait a minute. Why does that sound familiar? Okay. I guess I know you're wondering though. Yeah. This game actually came out oh, before Undertale. Wait. Okay, jokes huh, aside, cool. Providence really pulled out all the stops. With a lot of build up to the fourth wall breaks incorporated into the story as well as all the ways it gets implemented into the combat, I'd say Bill Cipher's edgy cousin earned their place on the list. I would pen feathery edgy cousin. I don't know why. Can't get past the feathers. Number five. Ooh, a game called Pony Island. Let's see what this is about. Oh, hi, Satan. Well, yeah, pretty much. There's only a <laughs> Just like the. Oh, hi, Satan. <laughs> okay, for those who have bonk. not seen the horror that is Pony Island, it is a metaphysical PC game where you thought it was an old arcade running gunner, but it was actually a point and click adventure game that was created oh by the devil the whole time. Honestly, the entire game game is kind of a mindful. Your main goal is to traverse so the, the big escape one? of the game, trying to progress as many demons get in your way and make your life frustrating and by now makes you think, what the heck am I playing? These demons are know. just programs that Lucifer created to impede you and, in a sense, they're bosses, mm. as you need to think creatively to beat each one. That's where Asmodeus.exe comes in. Unlike yeah, the other demons you've you fought up to this point, Asmodeus.exe tends to have a more sophisticated AI to them. At least, he hmm. says he does. Unlike they the other move. demons, he asks you questions and tries to mess with you as you answer them, like hacking your Steam friends list, asking trick questions, and pretending to crash the game. It gets frustrating enough that it feels like the constant fight you've been having with this trolley game is coming to a head. Honestly, it might seem weird when the entire game is trying to mess with you, but it is jarring in itself when you get to a program that messes with you DS with just questions. You drop your guard and it crashes the game. They just stay on your toes to the end. Hey, not sure we would play that game. Sorry, got an itch. Hey guys, you want to hear me talk what? about Undertale? There you go. Well, we're not talking about that. We're talking about Earthbound. Oh. Hmm. Yet, Earthbound is a pretty weird game in general. After all, you're beating up hippies and kids game. with psychic powers. Don't take that out of context. Anyways, Racing? considering it's Earthbound, you could probably guess the boss. Oh no, I guess. God, gosh. When you have a boss whose attack you cannot comprehend what it is and what it looks like, well, the fetus joke has yeah. been a bit overplayed, but he's an yeah. eldritch abomination that extends to the- Pretty much something else of your HP mind. Lovecraft would have made. I guess feels like you're fighting your SNES. Everything is so distorted. It feels like the console itself is possessed by an eldritch horror and you need to fight with everything you got be to be it. it was. Well, the battle itself can be pretty disorienting with all the trippy and staticky imagery, but in the same vein of the most 
dramatic JRPG final battles, the entire world's prayers come together to save you. In the end, Aww. even after landing the final blow, the screen turns off and it makes you wonder. Are you done yet? Did I win? But you did. Yeah, I probably got Hopefully, it. your mind is all the safer. Honestly, the whole battle is an entire trip and is literally the poster boy of mind funk no. losses for years to come. The only reason it's number four is the next few games actually did it a bit better, but let's be fair. Gygus is still in a league of his own. Just try to block Porky from your mind. He is just as disturbing. Depends on Porky, I guess. <laughs> There's been a while, but I, just... I got really nothing else to say. Uh, let me know what you guys think of these bosses so far, because, yikes. Honestly, I might have to try it found. I mean, to give her inspiration for an Undertale, you know? Why not? Let's see if I could get the Brave Gear games, like, on the Switch. I'm wondering if they're going to get to that GameCube emulator, or maybe in a DS one. That'd be kind of fun. Anyway, stop. Final three. Here we go. Now we're on Undertale. There we go. Picture this. You're deep in the underground. So, Gaster? Azrael? You see a light. Flowey. Ah. Uh, by... Howdy. Oh. I'm Flowey. A friendly talking flower? <laughs> Weird, but not so bad. Aw, oh, he wants to share his... Friendliness pellets? Nope, those are bullets. Flower boy's out yep. for blood. But Toriel saves you, so happy ending, right? Yeah, no. He comes back. Cause he coming! Why do I tempt fate? Actually, he pops up later, depending on the run, but I want to focus on the neutral run in this case. After okay, the usually people's Asgore, first Flowey runs. returns with enough human souls to become a god. He spazzes and twitches while making threats, and then... Yep, there it is. Uh... Meep. What even? Yeah, what, what, what they said. Well, thank you. Yeah, uh, what the hell? That certainly is a boss. How do I even describe this one? It looks like what happens when you have too much fun on your art program. Uh, oh, it's literally called yeah, Photoshop. Yeah, called Photoshop, Flower. Uh, yeah. Oh, and he's not just a pretty he's face. A, he puts you through the ringer by throwing stars, lasers, and practically the kitchen sink at you. Oh, and things go beyond meta for this fight, even by Undertale standards. Flowey yeah, messes with your save file, and if you think it's over after you die, <laughs> yeah, no. He breaks you out of the yeah. game over screen and lays into you all over again. Well, it's nice to know I won't look at flowers the same way again. Hey, sweetie, I wanted to put these on our bedside. Burn them! Never mind. Burn them! I still Before they come back, Genocide for Run Sands is the hardest Undertale boss, but Photoshop Flowey is no slouch either. It's definitely possible to beat him, but you gotta play smart and try not to be too distracted by his foster clock of a design. It's so eerie because his boss fight in the pacifist run is way more deep and tragic. While here, it's literal death by bitmap. <laughs> bitmap. I say accurate, but I'm not too sure on that front. Number two. Oh boy, this was a tricky one because there are so Batman, huh? many freaky boss fights in the Arkham series that completely warp and twist our literal view Mad of Hatter? reality. Mad Hatter and Rachel Ghoul in City, Copperhead and Origins, even Joker's ghost stalking you at night all involve us overcoming a bizarre frightening hallucination before returning to a normal plane of existence. Or at least as I normal think. as Batman's life can get. However, in the end, I had to give it up to the bone-chilling spectacles from the original game, the okay, Scarecrow. Scare we all know Scarecrow's ghoulish game, using toxin to drive his foes mad with fear. And Pretty lucky much. us in Asylum, we get to see its effects on the bat not once. But three, three times. times. Every time Batman gets gassed by the toxin, the world yeah. around him is transformed into a horrific a nightmare. In one hallucination, he's forced to confront the possibility of failing. And a jump scare. Bad. <laughs> <sighs> Nothing in this game really scares me all that much. You were saying? I can't see him, demon! Another <laughs> incident forces him to relive the tragedy of his parents' death. Finally, in the third encounter, the game oh, seemingly yeah. resets itself back to the opening with Joker and Batman's positions reversed, which is kind of more funny than scary without context. Yeah, a lot of people, including myself, thought the game broke. 
After each nightmare ends, the bat finds himself in a hellish obstacle course where he needs to keep out of sight from an enormous scarecrow and literally shine the light to cut through this ghoul's darkness. For the first major trip out in the Arkham series, the scarecrow nightmares really set the ball. Yeah, for basically, how if he catches you, you're done. Wasn't afraid to get. We got a first-hand experience of how damaging Scarecrow's influence can be on a monumental level. And we see just how vulnerable the Bat's psyche can be, making a deadly game of hide-and-seek into a battle to reclaim your sanity. Yeah, there are small hints that kind of give away be that reality is becoming undone. But honestly, they're so subtle that they don't ruin the sheer terror of the visions. Also, it goes without saying that the Nightmare World levels are better handled here than in Night, where they're just generic... Batmobile levels. Seriously, mm -hmm. I love the Batmobile. It's cool and all, but too much of a good thing is suffocating. Mm hmm. Makes sense. Honorable mentions. Let's see him out. Armored Ventus, Dream Drop Distance. Gotta work in that KH mention somehow. <coughs> Grotesque True. Queen, Dragon Guard. <laughs> Fight Assault Goddess via Rhythm Game in Tokyo. Enough said. Hugh uh. Bliss, <laughs> Sam and Max. More of a mini game than a boss fight, but he puts you on a merry go round of death that doesn't end Mer until you spoil <laughs> his magic tricks. Zen, Twilight Princess. He turns into this Gmod puppet. It's unnerving. Rachel Ghoul, Arkham City. This is why you shouldn't drink random concoctions at your buddy's bonfire, Batsy. Amen. <laughs> Lightweight. Monica, Doki Doki Literature Club. Eh, Pretty boss much. fight might not be the best term to describe this one, but she can mess with the game files, so I guess it counts? I guess just outplaying her. Number one. See it. I think we all know who it is. Gear Solid. Yep. So here it comes. many bosses could have made it here. The Sorrow, Screaming Mantis, most of Metal Gear Solid 2's final part. Well, that one really? really isn't a boss, but still one of the trippiest things in the series. Too bad this isn't mindfuck oh. moments. Considering this mm -hmm. is Metal Gear, there's already this expectancy that what I'm you're about to play is going to have uh... at least something stupid among the normally super serious story. Well, back mm -hmm. in Metal Gear Solid 1, this was pretty new, and when Psycho Mantis Aerials. showed up, the true mind Mantis. was real. Mantis Watch. didn't just break the fourth wall. He interacted with the player yeah, look, and trolled you. He made your controller rumble. He made you think he changed the channel. He mentioned a bunch of games by reading your memory card, including Castlevania or Suikoden if you're playing the PlayStation version, to Super Mario Sunshine and Melee if you played the GameCube remake. Speaking of the GameCube remake, he was even weirder by causing the room to tilt, invoke illusions like having paintings of the execs laughing at you, and having one of the men getting their face burned off to make a grotesque skull. Jesus. To beat him and fix and your controller GameCube? issues because you will have them, you need to change your controller port just to be able to Look, move. See, even he and said, I can't him. read you. It's pretty messed up. While a lot of the bosses on this list were screwy in terms of mood, fourth wall breaking, or just making you think, what the fuck? Yeah. Mantis is the only one that forces you to think outside the box, and even makes you physically alter your console settings to beat him. Luckily, when he comes back in Metal Gear Solid 4, the PS3 is just too much to handle. Still don't know why he Fair can enough. only read memory cards specifically, though. I'm the Fiery Joker, and, you know, I'm creating yeah. bosses with, you know, challenge, you know? Like, fair Artist challenge, balls? but, Are you know, fair? special challenge, like, a little oomph, like... Super challenge. Extra bosses? God. <laughs> well, we know what's coming up then. I'll figure out what to do next. I just has not uploaded and sell this stuff, but I guess something must have happened with Nintendo. <laughs> anyway, so there you go, the mind fucks. So let me know which one made you think what's going on or made you lose sense of reality. And until then, thanks for watching, everybody. See ya.